All right, good morning. Welcome to St. Andrew's Episcopal Church uh, in our offering of the Liturgy of the Word on this seventh Sunday of Easter. Uh, you may find the bulletin for this service in the email we sent out yesterday afternoon. And if you are new to St. Andrew's and are or participating in this service for the first time online with us, please let us know by leaving a comment. We'd just like to thank you for joining us today. Uh, we, are up, we are developing a plan for reopening the church, uh, for regathering, and though we have a target date of mid-June, the actual, that will actually depend on uh, statistics, uh, a decline in active cases in our county, and a decline in community spread of the virus. And given all that, uh, this week, on Wednesday at 6 p.m., everyone's invited to participate in a Zoom meeting with me. I know everyone loves a good Zoom meeting. Uh, so we'll be reporting on our plan for regathering as a church in the short term and in the long term. Uh, the information on how to participate will be included in the e-newsletter, e which will go out on Wednesday afternoon. And then on Thursday, the Rector's Book Club will meet to discuss the book, Call It Grace, and make plans for the books we'd like to read in the fall. And the link for that meeting uh, will also be in the Wednesday afternoon e-newsletter. Uh, and that is, uh, and to, to be able to follow all the things that are going on, uh, please follow us on Facebook, as many of you already are, or subscribe to our e-newsletter. That is the best way to find out what is happening uh, with St. Andrews these days. But thank you for being with us this morning.
Alleluia, Christ is risen. Glory. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, the King of glory, you have exalted your only Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph to your kingdom in heaven. Do not, uh, do not leave us comfortless, but send us your Holy Spirit to strengthen us and exalt us to that place where our Savior Christ has gone before, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, in glory everlasting. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the apostles had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom of Israel? He replied, It is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witness in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and the clouds took him out of their sight. While he was going and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus who has been taken up from you into heaven will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount of they called Olive. Whereas near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey away. When they had entered the city, they went to the room upstairs where they were saying, Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. All these were constantly devouting themselves to prayer together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter of Peter. Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that is taking place among you to test you, as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice insofar as you are sharing Christ's sufferings, so that you may also be glad and shout for joy when his glory is revealed. If you are revealed for the name of Christ, you are blessed, because the spirit of glory, which is the spirit of God, is resting on you. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that he may exalt you in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him, because he cares for you. Discipline yourselves, keep alert. Like a roaring lion, your adversary, the devil, prowls around, looking for someone to devour. Resist him, steadfast in your faith, For you know that your brothers and sisters in all the world are undergoing the same kind of suffering. And after you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, support, strengthen, and establish you. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Jesus looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son so that the Son may glorify you, since you have given him authority over all people, to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that, I, that you gave to me, I have given to them, and they have received them and know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. 
All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. On March 13th in the year 1933, a year in which the United States of America and the rest of the world were in the throes of the Great Depression, on that day, March 13th, thousands of people across the country stood in line outside of their banks. For the previous week, there had been a banking holiday which President Roosevelt had proclaimed and gave, which gave him and the Congress time to pass the Emergency Banking Act of 1933 as an effort to shore up the currency in the banks in order to restore confidence in them. For the previous month, there had been a run on the banks and customers had stood in long lines to withdraw cash in fear that the banks would go insolvent and that they would lose their money deposited in those banks. Having been president only for a few days, President Roosevelt gave his first fireside, fireside chat and he described what had happened and what he and the Congress had done to fix the problem. He said this bank holiday, while resulting in great inconvenience, while resulting in great convenience is, is necessary. And I want all our citizens in every part of the nation that the National Congress, Republicans and Democrats alike, show by this action a devotion to public welfare and a realization of the emergency. He ended this fireside chat by naming what was most important. He said, after all, there is an element in the readjustment of our financial system more important than currency, more important than gold, and that is the confidence of the people. Confidence and courage are the essentials of success in carrying out our plan. You must have faith. You must not be stampeded by rumors or guesses. Let us unite in banishing fear. We have provided the machinery to restore our financial system. It is up to you to support and make it work. It is your problem no less than mine. Together, we cannot fail. So with these new measures in place, the banks were set to reopen, and so people lined up. And the fear was that the run on the banks would continue. But that is not what happened. Happened. The bank customers were not there to make withdrawals, but they were there to return the cash which they had hoarded. A report from the Federal Reserve Bank of New York says that over the two weeks following the, the, the holiday, Americans returned to the banks more than half of their hoarded cash. And that report concludes that the bank holiday and the Emergency Banking Act of 1933 reestablished the integrity of the U.S. banking system. But for it to work, Roosevelt named what was essential. Confidence, courage, faith, and unity. Together, we cannot fail, he said. In today's lesson from the Gospel according to John, Jesus prays to God at the Last Supper and passes on to the disciples the strength and power that he had received from God, and he prays that they may be one as he and the Father are one. As I mentioned last week, before this Last Supper, Jesus had tied a towel around his waist and washed the disciples' feet. And then during a long speech called the Farewell Discourse, he gave them a commandment, a new commandment to love one another as he had loved them. You know, Jesus had demonstrated the sort of sacrificial love he was talking about by washing the disciples' feet. And he would demonstrate it again for the entire world by dying on the cross. And at the end of the farewell speech, from which today's reading is taken, Jesus looked up to heaven, as we read, and asked God the Father that in his death he may glorify the Father. He said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son so that the Son may glorify you. May he be glorified. He glorified you on earth by finishing the work you gave him, you gave me to do. So Jesus had finished the work God had given him to do. His hour had come, and so he would soon make his way to the cross, and so in that prayer, he gathered up into one prayer all those things that God had been doing through him. And then he passes those things on to the disciples. And in doing so, he uses the word glory. 
We use, it uses it four times in two verses. We usually use glory to mean praise or honor. You know, we, we earn glory and honor on the football field or on the battlefield. It is, well, it has that connotation here, but it has more to do with Jesus making God's presence known, making God's presence obvious. Through his death and resurrection, Jesus will glorify God, and God will glorify Jesus. God's presence had permeated Jesus' life, and here in this final prayer, Jesus passes the strength and the power that he had received from the Father. He passes it on to the disciples so they, they too may glorify the Father. The strength and purpose, the glory which permeated his life will permeate the life of the disciples. And Jesus says, all mine are yours and yours are mine and I have been glorified in them. Jesus has been glorified in the disciples. As the disciples of Jesus Christ, we seek to live in that same power, to live in that same prayer, to glorify God as Jesus glorified God. Jesus gave his, those disciples his power and purpose to continue his mission in the world and as that power has been passed on to them, it has been passed on to us, and so we share that with the world. And more than that, Jesus answered a question posed by, by Cain in the book of Genesis. Am I my brother's keeper? And the answer is yes. Jesus said, all mine are yours and yours are mine. He could have easily added, and they are one another's. Through Jesus Christ and the power of the Spirit, we share a common life based on love. When Jesus said about washing the disciples' feet, Peter had asked Jesus, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? And Jesus answered, you don't know now what I'm doing, but you will later understand. And Peter said to him, you will never wash my feet. And Jesus said, unless I wash you, you have no share with me. And that is one of the most important state statements in this whole Last Supper scene. Peter will have no share with Jesus unless Jesus washes his feet. And to have a share with Jesus means to have a relationship with him, to be in fellowship with him and the others who are in fellowship with him. We protect one another as, God asks, as Jesus asks God to protect the disciples. When those lines formed in March of 1933, many people wondered whether they were lines of foreboding or lines of encouragement? Would the run on the banks continue despite the holiday and the new measures, or was confidence in the banking system restored? Well, in this case, confidence and trust were restored. People felt enabled to respond for the good of all by re redepositing their money. And as we begin to open things back up, are the signs of life we see signs of foreboding or signs of encouragement? That is in part up to us. Though we all have a concern for ourselves, our own health and safety as followers of Jesus Christ, we, though, are tasked with loving one another as Christ loved us. Not just tasked, but commanded to love one another as Christ loved us. So we seek the health, safety, and welfare of others. In times like these, we know what those things are. I mentioned one of them last week. But Governor Abbott, our governor on Friday, released a video in which he named them which were practicing social distance in public, wearing a face covering, and washing your hands regularly. As FDR said, it's up to us to make this work. So th though Jesus left the disciples, he gave them his power and his mission. And we are recipients of that same power and have given, been given the same mission. And so may it permeate our lives as it permeated his. May we have confidence in his ongoing presence with us. May we have confidence in one another for we share a common life and may we be one as jesus and the father are one amen let us now stand and affirm the faith of the church in the words of the nicene creed
We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons, especially for Michael, the presiding bishop, for Andy, Jeff, Hector, and Kay, our bishops, and Daryl, our rector. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you, especially Michael N. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, especially Donald, our president, Greg, our governor, Dwayne, our county judge, and Andrew and Carl, our mayors, that there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us your grace to do your will in all that we undertake, that our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from grief or trouble, especially the Lacey family, the Durachik family, Jimmy H. and Marilyn B., that they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest, especially those who have laid down their lives in the armed services of our country. Brazos County Commissioner Sammy Catalina, Helen Lacey, mother of Mark Lacey, parish member Gladys Durachek, and Spencer Bain, on the anniversary of God opening to him the gates of larger life. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. We give thanks for our high school graduates, Cleo, Julia, and Spencer, and ask that you sustain them, O Lord, in your Holy Spirit. Give them each an inquiring and discerning heart, the courage to will and to preserve, and a spirit to know and to love you, and the gift of joy and wonder in all your works. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, whose blessed Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, descended far above all heavens that he might fill all things, mercifully give us faith to perceive that, according to his promise, he abides with his church on earth, even to the end of the ages. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, in glory everlasting. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, by what we have done, by what we have left undone. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Yours, O Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the victory, and the majesty, for everything in heaven and, our, and on earth is yours. Yours, O Lord, is the kingdom, and you are exalted as head over all.
And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever Amen God the Father, who has given to his Son the name above every name, strengthen you to proclaim Jesus the Christ, the Son of God. Amen. God the Son, our great high priest, who has passed into the heavens, 
May he clothe you with power from on high. May God, the Holy Spirit, who pours out abundant gifts upon the church, make you faithful followers of the risen Christ. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always.